Please join me in a salute to the flag. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting, uh, October 16th, 2017. We will start off with uh, public comment period. Anybody from the public wishing to speak? Public. Yes, sir. Charlie Preston, 47 Glade Path, Hampton. Um, I'd like to touch very briefly, if I could, old business, parking lots. Uh, I was watching the meeting of the selectmen on September 25th, and out of your minutes, on page 5, it says, Chairman Waddell, the parking lots, are we in line, ahead or behind? The finance director stated, we're behind about 80000 on page six, Selectman Bridal. You may want to look at automa automating our parking lots. We still need people in the lots to make sure it's picked up. People have questions. Finance director, same, page six. The auditors would love us. Well, that kind of perk, perked me up a little bit, and uh, I was kind of surprised to hear that, but... In an effort to help become user-friendly, I've been before this board, prior boards, and the HBAC without much success. When I question something, I always offer consideration. As you know, I've been in here multiple times for an entrance on Brown Ave. The last meeting you took a vote was in June. It was upstairs in the back room, and yes, it was... Uh, it was videotaped, but you couldn't hear, obviously you couldn't hear the audio or anything like that, so the people at home really didn't get a chance to hear what was going on. I was glad to hear Rusty say, you know, maybe it's time to consider automation. Okay, I think pay by time is the, the way to go. Just throwing a consideration out there. If you look at the police station lot on Ashworth Ave, you could cut that lot down the middle. Where that road goes now to the police station, You'd have a north and south of the lot. You could take and do it temporarily if you wanted to do this on a trial basis with Jersey barriers or fencing. You could put an entrance on Brown and only take half that lot, so half could be event and the other half could be time. There's about 125 spaces that would be on the north side of the, what the, where that road is that goes into the station. The monies to start this could be come from the Parks and Recreation Fund. Okay. I've been very successful with the state of New Hampshire with being user friendly. I haven't had as much luck in the town. I was kind of hoping to back my way out. You know, it started 20, over 20 years ago with bathrooms. Then it became parking meters. Then it became state park plates. I want you to know the state of New Hampshire is realizing more money than ever and the beach has never looked nicer. Now, I'd like to see if we can do it, and I think the town will realize a lot more money, and it will be user-friendly to our town residents and guests, and I hope you can consider that as you go forward, and you know, I'd appreciate if you let me know if you have any meetings on this parking situation with the lots. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Anybody else in the public wishing to uh, speak? Seeing none, we'll move to the board. Announcements and community calendar. Oh, public hearing. Ah, public hearing pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14 dash A proceedings, tax map 234, lot three off Winnicunit Road, Spring Marsh to lease town owned property for parking for the property at 595 Ocean Boulevard. This is the second hearing. Correct. So is there anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this? Seeing none. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to note this Thank is you the second know. public hearing, and I don't think there was any public comment on the first one either. Um, this is a proposal to lease some town-owned property that was 
uh, obtained by tax collector's deed uh, at 595 Ocean Boulevard. This is a property where um, no. on the non-wetland area, there have been spaces leased in past. Um, the, the, as part of this process, this comes before the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board for recommendations. The Conservation Commission, consistent with their approach when the Board last leased spaces to Lupo's Restaurant, um, opposed the leasing of this property, um, which is a part of it is the only access that we have to the Spring Marsh from a road. Um, the Planning Board's recommendation was not to give this because they asked for a a site plan that they could see what is the use being proposed so they could have some concrete idea and uh, that they had a meeting where that possibility was offered to present something and no one showed up to that one um, I would just recommend to the board that there is some wisdom in seeing a site plan for what it is what kind of development is it that it's being proposed that the town lease spaces before you act on it all right Thank you. We'll go to the board. So this is the second public hearing. So when would the hearing, would it be possible to get a plan before we would vote the next time? It is. There's uh, there's a... Two weeks. You would have to wait two weeks before you can, before the next meeting to vote. And that in that time frame, if the board would like that information, that's a chance for the person who's involved to come forward with it. Yeah, I would like to see a plan. I think a plan is a good idea. How can we vote on something if we don't know what's even going to be, right. you know, why it's going to be there? So, yeah. Mr. Griffin? I agree. Mr. Bean? This is clearly should be the position of the board that there will be no subsequent hearing until uh, both the planning board uh, has had a time to shop uh, a uh, site plan and the board of selectmen. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Okay, very good. So we're closing the public hearing at uh, 7.07, and we're going to uh, announcements and community calendar. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, I had a couple people, specifically a uh, Mrs. Caruso, inform me of some uh, noise ordinance work that has been done in Portland, Maine. So I just wanted to let anyone that it's of a concern that I did forward that information off to the town manager, assistant town manager, and chief of police. It seems like Portland has come up with something that is enforceable and works, so it could be something maybe the chief of police to look at and see if it could be applied to Hampton. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Town auction is Saturday. If you want to buy any good stuff at reasonable prices, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning at, uh, at the Public Works. Mr. Griffin. Yeah, I have brought up about the Portland um, noise ordinance last year. And part of uh, the situation there is when they have music that is too loud, they have them play it earlier. If they're having a concert, it starts at 6 o'clock instead of 8 o'clock. Just want to throw that out there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my two youngest granddaughters uh, uh, were around town with uh, plastic fire hats uh, on this past week, and there was a, uh, uh, an event at the fire station. And uh, hats off to the firemen, because I understand they're pretty busy doing other things as well, but they, uh, they really treat the youngsters great. Uh, kudos to the men and to the chief uh, at the Hampton Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I have nothing. Consent agenda. Road closure. Route 1 Lafayette Road Christmas Parade, 12-2-2017. Parade and Public Gathering License Christmas Parade, 12-2-17. Veterans Day Ceremony, 11-11-17. Raffle Permit. Professional Firefighters of Hampton, 11-16-17. For the Toy Bank, accept $1,500 donation to Parks and Rec for this for the after-season flag football gathering from Loco Sports, and 500 for the J.T. Strong Memorial Fund under Park and Rec for an annual scholarship of those unable to afford Park and Rec activities with permission to accept up to $1,000 annually for this fund. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Gina Rusty, all in favor? Approved. Very good. 
appointments. Russ Collins requests to use residential parking lot for construction vehicles at Plymouth and Campton Streets. Somebody handling that for him or? Well, I'll address it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, we did have a request. There is the, we, we of course do not allow on-street parking in Sun Valley, and that's part of the problem here. Uh, they are doing work for one of the residents down there at existing uh, 40th Plymouth Street, and they need a place to park their vehicles during the day when they're working, and they're, they're not using them directly in the yard. And they'd like permission to park them there. We don't have much in the way of parking activity in that area this time of the year, but they'd like the board's permission to park the vehicles there to be able to continue their work for this resident. Do you have any problem? I don't have any problem at all. I'll make that motion. I thought we, we addressed that a couple weeks ago over here, but let's make it official. And okay. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, Chris Jacobs and Jennifer Hale request to revise hours of operation regarding the installation of Lafayette Road sewer construction. We were here earlier before the sewer Lafayette Road project started uh, and the board took a vote to uh, continue the hours that they were working for Aquarian, which was 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. 6 a.m., excuse me. Um, we've been requested by Jamco to see if they could start working at 9 p.m. instead. Uh, we did put the word out. We had a meeting here last Wednesday. Uh, I personally visited most of the businesses on Lafayette Road. Um, we sent out mailings to uh, the apartments and residents. Um, there was probably about 10 people here. Uh, there was no objection to the earlier hours. Uh, this goes to just help us assure that we are done by the November 19th date. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yes. Not a question. I, I, I was at that meeting that Jennifer had, and uh, I'll tell you that the the residents up there were very appreciative of all that she has done to keep the lines of communications open. Uh, everybody understood what she was talking about, and um, nobody at that meeting seemed to have a problem with them starting at 9 o'clock. So if you want, I'll make that motion and uh, allow them to go at 9 o'clock. Motion by Rusty. Second. Seconded by Rick. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't go away. <laughs> You handed us an emergency request uh, dealing with a VFD replacement for a blower at the wastewater treatment plant? Yes. Last week uh, I was informed by uh, Mike Carl and Mike Duby uh, that the VFD, the variable drive uh, that runs the aeration blower, had failed. Uh, they had hired the uh, electrical engineer to come in. They problem um, shot it, tried to figure out what was going on. It turned out to be one of the parts when they called the manufacturer. They don't even make that part anymore. Uh, it's 21 years old. Uh, we do need the third one. We actually need to replace all of them, you know, one at a time, but this is to get this one back online. Um, the request is for $13,000 and change. I don't have my paperwork in front of me. Um, we are proposing to take it out of the sewer. Uh, the wastewater development charge account uh, that we have set up. Um, this is just one piece in the puzzle of the wastewater treatment plant, uh, also recommended as part of our facilities plan uh, to replace. It's $13,722, Mr. Chairman. And we that do have is the, funds. the part and installation. I'll make the motion. Second. Though. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? That's it. Anything else? Can she leave? No? no, no. See ya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Donna Payne, Pine, uh, 43. <laughs> okay. 43 Campton Street, replace seawall stairs and replace impervious concrete with pervious pavers. Good evening. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Thank you. Getting to feel like home here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you want to know what I want to? Yes, you could just explain. I guess I'm here because I need Tom permission to replace the sea stairs that were there for years, I'm sure. I don't know if they got wrecked or, you know, with the tide or what. And uh, I also am uh, putting a fence up, a vinyl fence, and 
Um, the biggest problem, I guess, is that and I didn't know it, that there's eight feet of land that belongs to Hampton. And, you know, with all those zones and everything, you know, the water and 50 foot in the buffers, and I had no clue, because it's all paved. It's been paved for over 20 years no. with cement pavers. Not a year. So all I want to do is replace those pavers on that eight foot by probably 50 feet with permeable pavers. And um, I guess they don't want me to. Just, you know, I want to match the rest of the yard, which is going to be permeable. I think I'm doing something good, taking out non-permeable, putting in, you know, permeable, and it's been a hassle. Mr. Chairman, do you want to say anything on this? Do you have any? Mr. Chairman, the, uh, this, is, this has uh, been before the state. Uh, she has a state permit to do this work. Uh, of course, the, the property is town property, uh, which means she does need your permission to do this. She's been before the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Uh, I don't see a problem with trying to uh, follow the town ordinances, which is exactly what they're trying to do. They have a non-conforming pavement there now they're trying to make it conforming and they're trying to do it in such a way that it will enhance the value of their property plus the town's property anybody on the board I have no questions I'm ready to no make questions. a motion did they tell you you have to vacuum those uh, permeable year. pavers twice a year but I didn't ask what kind of a vacuum you get <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen an outdoor vacuum I'm serious you better ask who comes and checks this Oh, okay. I don't like it. Oh, because really, I didn't get to say. Action. Motion. Yeah, I'll make the motion that we allow for replace seawalls and replace impervious concrete with pervious pavers. Stairs. Second. Stairs. Stairs. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? You're all set. Thank you. You don't have to come back. Oh, so you have to call so your opinion. I'm so sorry. I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, town manager's report mr. chairman members of the board uh, this the selectmen I don't think this is a secret but the selectmen have received a resignation from just a, mr. John Nyan from the Hampton Beach area Commission effective November 16th 2017 the sewer replacement is underway on Lafayette Road uh, as you heard this evening uh, it is night work I would encourage people to please be careful of the detours and the workers and the, and the heavy equipment on the roadway. Uh, this is going to be one of those zones where you have to travel very slowly because things are going, a lot of action is going on at the, at the same time in different places. The town auction for a surplus equipment will be held at the Public Works Yard at 9 a.m. this coming Saturday, October 21st, 2017. Bring lots of money. The town can use it. Uh, the tax collector's office will be closed on Wednesday, October 18th, for annual state training. Uh, at the last selectman's meeting, it was reported the town had taken five or six feet of property by eminent domain along Ocean Boulevard for the purpose of sidewalk construction. We did an extensive check of the registry of deeds, and no such takings have been recorded in the registry uh, under the name of the town of Hampton, or for that matter, under the name of the state of New Hampshire. Um, that's just an update. State DOT will be meeting with the selectmen on October 30th to discuss the coming repairs on the Harbor Bridge couplers. This is an important meeting. Those couplers need to be replaced and be worked on, and I have a feeling that means that the bridge is going to be in the upright position for a period of time. Whether that's a day, several days, I don't know. But they're going to come and explain the process to it to us so that we have a good idea about what's going on. We have had uh, a situation uh, on Drakeside Road. As you know, we've finished paving it. It's, um, shall we say, a, a speedy way to travel now, uh, depending upon your attitude with speed. But we have had some problems with uh, uh, an establishment over there, and we would request that the Board of Selectmen ban parking on both sides of the roadway uh, from approximately the old underpass where the railroad was uh, all the way to the Drake's River on both sides of the roadway. We have had two instances in the last two weeks where we've had one evening at nighttime we had 50 cars parked in the roadway. They were actually The wheels were actually on the roadway, so the roadway was narrowed down by a whole lane. 
and we've had one this past week where 35 to 40 cars were parked the same way on the roadway uh, for an activity at what used to be the tennis court building and is, is now being used for basketball apparently and they had some tournaments there but we had people at nighttime walking in the street which is very dangerous there are no lights there uh, it's tree covered it's dark early uh, we believe that there should be a no parking and tow zone instituted within that area questions for the town manager um, I have one thing Mr. Welch we or as the chairman or the board of selectmen received the resignation letter from Mr. Nine and then I think I believe that day I know you had sent out an email to all of us to let us know yes um, so that is an appointed position by this board it is the whole commission is appointed because I have actually already heard things about they already lining people up for the vacancy now why aren't we if they have people in mind I'm not sure why we don't know about this or why they haven't let us know anything I know he resigned because he stated something about how he could not work with this board of selectmen so I just want to make sure that we stay informed and that any type of uh, candidate is known to the Board of Selectmen and that also anyone who may be interested in the position is given a fair chance. Well, the position actually isn't opened until November 16th. Uh, that's when it becomes vacant. Okay. It has been filed legally with the town clerk. I gave her a copy of the filing, uh, which we're required to do by law. Uh, the board will inform me as to what action you wish to take and how you wish to take it and it will be placed on the agenda before November 16th so that you can have time to think about it, instruct me as to what you wish us to do, and we'll proceed to do in the manner to which you would like us to, to actually move forward. But it is your appointment. Um, you can make it any time between now and whenever. It doesn't have to be before November 16th or after. Uh, when you're, you're ready and, and uh, your pleasure has uh, been identified and you, you exercise it. Thank you for the clarification. So if we, if we, on that same note, if we put out there that we are going to bring that up on November 6th, which is two meetings away, that would give time for people to notify if they want to come in, they Absolutely. could, or give yeah. us the notice of their intent of wanting to do that. That gives two weeks for people to do that. I'm sure we'll have somebody that will come in. I'm sure you will. So I'll make a motion that we bring that up on November 6th. Okay, do we want something posted on the website saying anybody be interested? You're yes. making this motion, it will be posted. Yes. So, okay. Uh, I'll make that motion, so. Second. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Well, okay, here, here's my thing, um, Mr. Chairman, and we've got a busy night. We've got yep. Hampton Public Works. Uh, I've got Mr. Um, Nyan's resignation letter. Uh, this is governed by law, this commission. This is an appointed position. This is under Chapter 216J. There are specific duties. There are specific responsibilities. I'm happy to address those. This is predicated on the Seacoast Parks Master Plan, Chapter 81, House Bill 672, which is a law that we'll need to discuss. This is based upon the Hampton Beach Area Master Plan which is a soon-to-be 20-year-old document, which I need to discuss and the board needs to discuss before there's an appointment. There had been, per John Nyan's email to me, on 5, 6 of 16, a 20-year-old document. To my knowledge, there have not been any enacted amendments since the commission's inception. So this is a long night tonight with respect to those that are here. This is Mr. Nyan's choice. Uh, this is his newspaper article, and this is not a priority of this board tonight. It doesn't require an appointment by the 16th. It doesn't require that we fill it at all. We have important work to do here tonight. Okay. I'll withdraw my second. What I, the reason why I made a second is I, it, in the past, whenever anything for any of the commissions has been done, we've always made, uh, you know, a, announced a period so that people could express their interests if other people are interested. And in the past, this was a very coveted, uh, not because it's not for the chairman, it's just for an appointment to the board. Uh, I think the last time there were 11 people that applied. Uh, yeah, there were quite a few. It, 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 maybe even more. So 
I think that we need to set a period. It really doesn't need to be two weeks. Probably three weeks would be even better. For whatever and time you want. I then, just... at either before then, we can address Phil's right about discussing what the appointment is, because unless we really here all know exactly what it is, we probably shouldn't be getting ready to appoint someone. So this is something to be discussed. So maybe in two weeks we could discuss uh, and take two weeks to discuss what Phil wants to discuss. And I think three weeks would be a good period to allow people to put their names forward. And in the meantime, we'll know exactly what we're looking for that's, after we discuss it in two that's weeks. That's fine. That was, my whole point was to get it out a couple of weeks so that if we hear people's intentions, they will come in. And if we have any other information, we can bring it up then. So do you so, want to make that the motion? Do you want to make it three weeks? Three weeks. With and then two we weeks can discuss it in two weeks so that we're all clear exactly how it all and, goes. Okay. And, and just quickly, not to prolong the whole thing, if, if you could put together something on, on what it entails. Mr. Tom Andrew, if that's not too put, you, put together a copy of the statute and the requirements of the job. Okay. Right. And okay. May I, Mr. Chairman, I would like this uh, for an agenda item next week, and I will have a dissertation and a PowerPoint uh, presentation. Thank you. Okay. You asked for two weeks. You asked the next week. Yeah. Well, I think three weeks for, to let people put their names forward. No, but what I'm saying is, do you want it on the agenda for next week? Well, that, that's fine. Fine. That's okay. good with Bill. Well, can we put that on the agenda for next week? Yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I can't. I was in a hurry to get here tonight for the early meeting, Mr. Welch. Sir. And I was. Someone gave me a copy of their survey from down at the beach, oh. and it clearly marks that the town is on their property by four and a half feet. Well, and so I'll bring that down tomorrow. Please do, because I've actually looked at the 1899 filings mm -hmm. and compared them with what's in the registry of deeds, and it doesn't seem to be a discrepancy. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know what happened. The, um, this goes back to 1978. Yeah. That's when the uh, survey is. Yeah, they're not all 100 feet deep, I can tell you that. Yeah. They, they vary in, in, in depth. And the way the survey shows, it shows that there's a corner of four and a half feet that are in the town um, sidewalk. So I'll just bring that by tomorrow. But, the uh, Drake Side Road thing, the, uh, Sir. there's a change of use, right, on that, that facility That's there. something that the planning board is looking at, yes. There so appears to be a change of use. Before the planning board. Or, or. It does, if it's a change of use, it does have to go okay. before the planning board. All right, all right. So and I believe they're looking at that now, and they're going to discuss that with the owner of the property. Okay, now do you need us to vote on the no parking tonight? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, it's not in effect. Okay, it, it won't drive them on it further onto the grass or anything, will it? Well, there's no grass there to be driven onto. Marks, it's, right? we, yeah, we don't want them off the edge of the road either yeah. because they'll sink or roll one of the two. Tow trucks will make a lot of money. Yes, I agree. Anybody want to make a motion on that one? On parking on Drake's side? The... I'll make the motion to have no parking. Charles, sure, second. That's... Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? One abstention. Okay. All right. uh, anything else for the town manager? Nope. Old business. Uh, pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14 dash A proceedings for 7th Street release portion of town owned deed restriction number four on formerly leased land. We have something for us. You have held two public hearings. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, over the previous four weeks, uh, there was a request, and this has gone through the Planning Board, it's also gone through the Conservation Commission as required by statute. Uh, the proposed amendment to the deed would remove the portion of the deed restriction indicating the grantee may not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line. This will provide for the addition of an overhang on the front door and the replacement of the existing brick stairs and iron rails. Okay. And the Planning Board and, and Conservation Commission have both recommended for both recommended. Any questions on this? We have a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay. A second. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, vote pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14 dash A proceedings 230 Exeter Road donation of land to the town 
as shown on A-1 and donation of drainage easement to the town for drainage pipe and outlet as shown on sheets A-2 and C-3. Mr. Chairman, this, this as well has been to the board for the last month at two public hearings. It involves a subdivision at 230 Exeter Road in Hampton, uh, and it also involves the donation of 12 acres of land at the time that everything is taken care of, so to speak, uh, as far as deeds and sale of property and transfers of things that need to be done prior to that. That deed will be coming to the town, and uh, I believe town council has made a motion, which I have, that uh, moved to accept the warranty deed for the 12-acre parcel being offered at 230 Exeter Road, LLC, by the grantor at such time as one of the following alternative contingencies is satisfied, either A, that the warranty deed to the town of Hampton states that the land is being donated for permanent open space in accordance with the conditions impressed imposed by the Zoning Board of Adjustment on May 19, 2016, in granting 230 Exeter Road LLC's variance petition 13-16 and or B that the grantor obtained from the Zoning Board of Adjustment a release of said condition of approval for conservation land followed by the Planning Board's uh, amendment to, to this corresponding subdivision approval condition 4 on August 3rd, 2016. That's a mouthful. Yes. But that would be the, that would be the general motion. Okay. Do we go to the on this or no, this, no this is this is now for board decision. It's for board decision, right. so we don't go to no any discussion. No. Okay, uh, the board. Regina. I have no questions. I'm good with the motion prepared by council. I'm good. Uh, none, sir. Thank you. I support it. Mr. Griffin. No comment. There was two parts to the motion, or there was two motions. No, there was one motion, two parts. Okay. Okay. The, this property has yet to be deeded out yes. and, and, and resolved, okay? And the the alternate here is A, that the warranty deed to the town of Hampton state the land is being donated for a permanent open space in accordance with the conditions that the, the zoning board put on the condition that it be for conservation land. That condition is now being removed, okay? That was part B. Yep. So, okay. And it's basically for open space. That was the intention of the owner. And that's on the basis of which he will he will transfer the land to the town. Okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor of the motion. All opposed to the motion. The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. They're already going back. Yeah. Right. It's subject to their approval. It's subject to. Uh, da, da, I'm sorry. Budget discussion. Recreation. One parking lot and two lifeguards. Good evening. Hi there. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Good. It's nice to see you guys too. Is that the chip? Are you from Bosco and Concord? Oh, Concord. I remember you mentioned the name, and I was over there today, and I didn't think it looked like your type of town. <laughs> well, it's a little higher than my type of town. Yeah. Which, which it's interesting. Town? Well, that's what I was thinking when I was driving through it. I thought, I can't believe she grew up here. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so do you want to start with the recreation budget? Yes, let's do that. Yeah, okay. I... So there's not a lot of changes per usual every year in the budget, but um, one thing I just wanted to draw attention to or show you was that I had put a little bit more money in the overtime budget because we've had to, we took a good look at why there was overtime going on, and it's, um, we've been doing a lot of helping out the parks department because there's just not enough staff there. So we've been doing a lot of that, so every time we have to go down to the parks, there's overtime. It's not for me. I mean, I, I go down there too, but every time Renee has to go down there, it takes him away from the job that he does here. So um, that's why our overtime line is a little bit higher. So I added more money into the overtime account for next year. Uh, in supplies and expenses, 
we have the new software this year. Our old software used to uh, was a huge expense at the very beginning when we bought it, and then every year it was a little, little less than three thousand dollars for the software that we used to use. The new software, small expense to start. It's thirty nine hundred dollars a year to keep that software. So that went up a tad just because the price is a little bit different for our software that we use in the recreation department. Um, other than that, I move stuff around in the parks part of the department. Um, every other year I buy five bar for the playgrounds and things of that nature. There's things that get loam that gets bought every other year type thing. So that stayed kind of as a constant. And the only other change that I think that you'll really see here is in the in the part-time wages. I had tried to add like a um, a few more hours. I I thought I might be able to do a seasonal and part-time thing with the gut with the parks guys, and I couldn't do it. So that's that's just the thing that they'll show in the budget that was removed. So. It went back, it says, it's telling you that it's removed, but there were some raises put in for um, the guys to change their salaries. And it also adds one position, one extra seasonal position. Both the season, I had put in one seasonal position at $10 an hour, and we've changed it to two for this year at $14 an hour to be in the same category with Public Works. Okay, so as far as the part-time wages, the, the suggested, the presented changes, are we going to do like we've done with the other sections? I'd rather hold off on that, like we did with the other sections of the budget for non-union right now, if that's okay? I would say so. That, that's, I would, I would go along with that. I'd, Rusty? It's just the two part. it's the two parks employees, and then the other part of it was we added another seasonal position. So okay. you added an additional one. Mm -hmm. That's why the part-time wages are up that much. Correct. The additional one. Yeah. What What was What was the cost of the additional? Well, it went in from ten dollars an hour at six hundred and forty hours to fourteen dollars an hour at six hundred and forty hours for one extra person. I don't. I'm just. You know, you got to figure on that. Read your backup. Yeah, I think this is something. So Five thousand one hundred twenty dollars more than what's on that line there. She has the new part-time. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and just for clarification, if I may, Mr. Chairman, so is this a, a pay raise from ten dollars to fourteen dollars per hour? Yes. And, and that's actually well. There, there are um, seasonal positions that I had had one in there for ten dollars an hour. We added a second one because we don't have enough help down in the parks. And then to make it comparable, because they're doing the same type of job as Public Works, they put them in at $14 an hour. And I know, Mr. Chairman, we've talked before with the town clerk's budget. This is a 40% pay raise, but it's it's not a budget buster, but it, it's a substantial raise. And I would prefer to do all raises. All right, we got two that want to prefer to do them all together. These are also positions that did not fill. We could not find people to work in those positions. I would rather do them all together. Yeah, I think we're going to do all that together. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, I have a, oh, other questions? Okay. No, Rusty? Right. The gas is just up because that's what the actual is? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And it's all in one line now. Rick? No. Right. Phil? Negative, sir. Thank you. Uh, Christy, yeah. did we go, the gas on everybody's is up a lot, the gas and diesel. Did we go too low last year, do you think, or? Uh, yeah, when we did the average price at the end of uh, September, I believe. I haven't put the new numbers in there, but the average price per gallon for the year is a dollar eighty-three or a dollar eighty-four, and I believe in the budget last year it was in at a dollar seventy-five. Okay. So um, we cut that line a little too much. The, we were trying to get that was closer to what the actuals were in. 16 however the gas prices as we all know have risen in 17 right. we've all seen that at the pump so that's something we can expect will yes 
be all over the place. Right. Yeah. And yeah. we're updating that as we go along. So hopefully by the time we get through the budget committee and get it ready to be presented to the voters, we will have a better idea of exactly how many gallons we have used for the year along with the average price that we've paid for both gasoline and diesel. We have uh, very thorough records now on that tracking records that we've been using up in finance. Okay. Thank you. So I was just pointing out a few changes, but as a general rule, it's kind of status quo. Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll deal with the, mm -hmm. the thing. So lifeguards, is that what next, or what are we at next? Parking lots. Parking lots. <laughs> We don't actually have lifeguards. Right. Yeah, I know. But I guess we still have the line. We item. leave the line item in, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So the parking lots, um, and I will say this for parks too. I guess the parking lots. I gave Victor's position, the the supervisor's position, stayed at the same rate under um, seasonal wages. I did put in a 3% raise for those, just the cost of living raise or whatever. They usually make um, $10 an hour, but they haven't had a raise in a couple of years, so I threw that in. And it, if this should move forward and pass, it is also my intention to give a 3% raise to all of the people that are in the revolving fund, which would be the camp staff and the after-school program staff and, that, and stuff of that nature during the revolving fund, too. So that's my intention there. And then... The change that you see under the lease, we had to add a thousand dollars onto the lease for Church Street, and then everything else is pretty much the same. The um, supplies and expenses fluctuates every year with the different things. If we need a new sign or something of that nature, so that's just a little fluctuation there. Questions? Um, no. Again, with the wages, I'd like to do that all at one time. But I do have a question for, I know we heard earlier from a public comment about how the parking revenues were down, whatever it was, 80000 Obviously, we didn't have a very good summer to begin with. Um, and then... Weird we weather. <laughs> right, very weird. It was really weird, weird weather. Um, and then we were talking a couple weeks ago, the board was talking about automating the lots, which would probably, it would be costly. Um, I'm not sure. We'd probably have to have someone come in. Right. But... My thinking is, if we're going to have someone come in to do that, why not come in to do a garage? Right. And I talked to you a little bit this afternoon because, like I said, when that came out in public, I wasn't prepared to speak about it publicly. Yep. And I spoke with you a little while about it this afternoon, and I'm really considering maybe having, I don't know how anyone, everyone feels about it, but at least having someone, if we're going to have someone come in and do a study on automation, what would the cost difference be with just adding a garage and doubling, if not tripling, our capacity? Right. Because we do have the prime parking location down mm -hmm. that beach, if you ask me. It's I agree. right in front of the police station. I agree. And I'm not opposed to that at all. I just know that a few years ago I did look into automation, and it was very costly, and I was told at that time that we would do status quo because they would, didn't want to. It was a different, obviously it was a different board, but... Um, they didn't want to move forward with that, but I'm not opposed to looking into it to see what today's figures are either to see for future reference. And right, Charlie's, exactly. And Charlie's maybe, talked about that. In you know, get more of like an idea, like maybe figure out a way that the town could agree to maybe start putting some money aside to work toward that because we all know parking is an issue, yeah. and we got we got we got the parking right there. I know. We just got to uh, build on it, and you guys do a great job, and you can. Uh, there's no control over weather, so right, thank you. <laughs> right. Trustee. I think the parking and, and the garage are two different stories, two different entities. I think we can start with, with parking. I'm not opposed to looking at a parking garage, but I, I think we can start with the automation of, of the parking, and I would still like to see that. We look into that, make sure we can do it. Uh, I think it would be more friendly to the people. You know, when you come down to the beach and you got to shell out twenty dollars in cash for the parking lot and then that takes twenty dollars away from but if you could use your credit card or or whatever to, to uh or your debit card so that you're not using all your cash up for doing that i think it's it's better i think it gives you a more accurate count like i said before you still need the employees to work in the lots uh so i i think we should look at the automation 
And if I mean, if you want to put in that too to look at a parking garage too, that's fine. But I, I think we should at least start with the automation first. And as far as the employees, I, I have no problem uh, uh, waiting on the salary line. But we need to also look at our employees. We need to have, and we've talked about a wage study before, we have to uh, look at what different departments in our own town are getting with similar jobs. Uh, I know we've had a hard time finding employees. Uh, we can't fill those summer positions because they can't do that, but we're not alone in that. Uh, every, every restaurant, motel, hotel out there is feeling the same pinch. So I think we need to look at what our, uh, our salaries are. We need to adjust some of those. And so, and I, th I think Diana has tried to do that with this. I mean, we can talk about what we want to give for raises, but we also need to look at what we need to do to adjust the, the actual positions and, and what that position is worth. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree with Rusty, and I think that <clears throat> we have to, if we were to um, automate, uh, we have to, uh, we st like, right, you, like you said, we still need some employees, but I would think the employee situation would be drastically different, and maybe we need to be starting um, with some fresh ideas. Uh, you know, there could be, it could be a whole different structure than it is today. And I think those two things go hand in hand. I think it would have to be because truthfully, besides paying for it, I think the hardest thing is going to, is going to be how do we manage the leases? Yeah. Right. We may need some type of uh, direct s supervisor that's different th from what we have today or whatever. So we'll have to look at all of that. And I think that, you know, um, I myself am not in charge in favor of the town getting into the business of trying to manage the parking because there's other private people that could do that. But even by automating it uh, and people only paying for the time they use, which is different than the way we do it today, uh, who, that will show whether if there what the true value of having a garage there. I think the automation part of it would work as a good predecessor right. to give us the idea of what we do need there. Yeah, the thing I can't wrap my head around is if we have like say two or three turnovers in a day now at ten dollars an hour, that's thirty dollars in for each spot. If we had the same amount of turnover, if we were charging two dollars an hour, would be we make would we be making the same amount? That's the part I, I can't figure out from the statistics that we have. I, I have a feeling that, we're going to make less. Well, that's what I originally thought, but I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. So, But it would be fairer. Uh, so, you know, the devil's in the details. Right, exactly. But with a garage, you can have more capacity down there. Right. And you still need people with a garage. Right, Don't get we, me wrong. Right. You still yeah. need, you still need people. Go to Phil. Oh, sorry. Next. Uh, I, yeah, um, I don't have any comments operationally tonight, Mr. Chairman. I, I support your budget as presented uh, across all lines, uh, with the exception of uh, the uh, pay matters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and I would just like to say that uh, the same thing, you know, hold off on the wages until then. You guys do a great job. The only reason the Patriots won yesterday is because you sent three buses down there, right? <laughs> right. And it was the cheering from Hampton that brought them the victory. So. It wasn't looking good at the beginning. I was like, let's go, Renee, come on. Yeah. So congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Somebody right. asked me one thing, and yep. I thought I would mention it to you while you're here. Uh, there must be a 9X building or something that's down off that church parking lot. Some a 9X little, building? Yeah, some little building. or yes, it's, at, it's on Church Street. It's at the top of the lot. Yeah. Um, I hear that that's really in bad uh, disrepair. Do you know anything about that? It's basically a brick building, and they've allowed the encroaching vegetation to sort of submerge the building. Mm -hmm. The neighbors down there would like it if there's anything that can be brought well, we forward can, about We it. can whisper in somebody's ear. Well, that might be a good idea. Thank you. Actually, I have one question for the Parks and Recs Director. Yep. Halloween, Hampton, is the 31st? Ha yes. And we are, <laughs> yes. Hampton, Halloween, trick-or-treating is the 31st from 5.30 to about 8.00. Okay. And also, I did want to say we are working on a Halloween program for the kids that will be sometime in the week before Halloween. Okay. Also, so you'll see some publicity on that coming out. We're going to do a little uh, pumpkin putt putt. We're going to do some uh, miniature golf and some other things with the kids. Thank 
you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And Mr. Chairman, lifeguards is one dollar in the budget. One dollar. Okay. So we've been okay, unable to hire place. now for oh, three years, I think. All right with a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> All right with a dollar. I think it's. Nah. Get the account open. It'll get there, I think. Yeah. DPW, please. Because you're going to hold up the salaries. So we voted first with the exception of salaries. You want to vote it with the exception of salaries? Uh, why don't you hold on that for? Yeah, what do you want to do? Because I think sure. some of the salaries that are there, you need to investigate because it may radically change what you're doing, depending on what you do. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. The uh, advice that I got was to. By the way, for anyone who hasn't met, Madame Marie Hall, uh, our new ops coordinator, uh, took over for Teresa. And she retired. So the first budget meeting, I told her you go really easy on her and give uh, me a lot of technical questions. But, no, but, that, but that, not easy on you. <laughs> no, that, that the way this works is, is typically uh, we stick to the high points um, and um, that between the three of us, we've always been able to figure out, you know, when you have questions, where that particular information comes from, because uh, with this many budget lines, um, it took all three of us to put them together. So that's why we're all here. Um, I do know that my budget is up uh, seven and a half percent, uh, seven point one five percent. I did look at other ways to trim the budget. Um, some items are only a thousand dollars. Some are as high as fourteen or seventeen thousand. We do uh, uh, would be proposing in the future some budget cuts. Uh, whether you want to entertain those now or you just want to talk about the overall uh, bigger ticket items and where we stand at that, uh, that's what we would do. Why don't we go through like other people did? You know, places where you have substantial, substantial differences. Increases. Okay. Uh, under uh, administration part-time wages, the second line on, on the budget, it is up 19%. Um, that was one of the one area where um, I was going to look to trim some of that out, uh, trying to stick with more of the uh, several-year average. Uh, I was looking basically to cut out 14,553. Part of that has to do with um, when you do. We have the part-time or the overtime uh, things. Uh, newer people have moved in. Um, uh, some of the uh, part-time was filled in before by a higher st wage staff, and so there's some adjustments over the year uh, according to that. Um, the third line, uh, fourth line down the career incentives uh, at $1,000, I'm going to strike that. That was uh, uh, something that was specifically uh, for Teresa. Uh, where she retired, that's no longer needed in next year's budget. So just thought I'd be very upfront and trim that out. Um, going down to um, more towards the bottom of the line, diesel fuel up at, uh, if I'm reading the right line, sorry, gasoline, yep, 37.13%. I'll use the same explanation that was given before. It really comes from the finance office. And, we don't, as, as you stated, I think correctly, we're coming with more accurate numbers every every week and every year. Same thing with diesel fuel. Chris, could you just water? Water. 55%? Yes. Um, we have some 30 accounts, 25, 30 accounts. Each one of the pump stations is a uh, water account. I think there's... Uh, we have like one water account at the transfer station, one at the wastewater treatment plant, one for the outside hydrant, one for the garage slash operations building. Um, we now pay a $14 and 60 some odd cent fee every year or every month for every one of those accounts. So I have a number of accounts, um, mainly the pump stations, that the water usage is 60 cents, but the bill is $14 and 60 cents of, uh, of, uh, of uh, office preparation fee from the water company. So our total increase is really due to 
just their them reverting from quarterly to monthly billing strictly. Um, Fred and I had been talking about maybe uh, possibly closing off some of the pump stations, but um, since I was on vacation last week, I hadn't really had that conversation with with uh, wastewater treatment staff. But that is why that's up. <coughs> Okay. Um, we would like to, let's see, uh, under engineering, uh, we're like looking to go from $35,000 budget this year to 55000 next year, uh, which is a 57% increase, um, you know, based upon what you heard at the last quarterly update. Very, very busy department. Um, we use this engineering account in lieu of, let's say, putting on additional staff to get outside engineers uh, directed to various tasks and problems to get these things solved so that we can then move forward each construction season with implementing them. And so from a cost performance perspective, that line is huge to us uh, because you then see it in the performance. Those items, just to add to that, the CIP plan that's put together uh, this year, I, we were very specific as to what the costs were, how it would be broken down, and the engineering costs are in there. So for each project that would be done the following year, you have to pre-engineer it. This is part of that, uh, making sure we're pre-planning so that when funds do get approved in subsequent years, we already have the planning work done so we know how much things are gonna cost and we know what the design's gonna take. People want to ask questions as they go along, which rather well, like the whole. Well, I think we, you know, at least look at each page okay. as we go along. Okay. I just have a. Go ahead. Did you have a question, Rusty? Well, I was going to make a motion that we go along with his recommendations on those two lines. Uh, line number. Uh, Part-time wages. Trimming out fourteen. Fourteen to five ninety-three. Five five three. Five five three. Yep. And the. Incentive, zero. career incentives, zeroing that out. Correct. Of a thousand dollars. What's the trend? Sure, anything we can take out. That's what. I'll second that. All in favor? <laughs> Good. What are we trimming? You get that, Christy? I got that. Uh, second line down and fourth line down. The part time wage line might be one you guys get yeah, to visit that's all the that we that we put in. Yeah. You might want to wait, but that's just. Yeah, it, should we read it, wait on the part-time wage one? Because there's increases in there, Rusty, and the, you have, the board had discussed on multiple occasions that they didn't yeah. want to give any pay increases. You okay with the federal storm? Together. Well, it doesn't mean we can't come back at it after we have the right figure, does yes. it? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think he just wants to bring it down. To I just want to bring it down to that. I'm not saying that we won't. Okay bring that back it's just that we he's already given us recommendations and we'll, we'll we'll go to that and if we want to bring back the the prices and the, the uh okay all right so we voted on that okay all in favor opposed all right chris i had a question on the engineering this year you had thirty-five thousand. right and so far you've only spent six yes is that true or have you spent more we We've committed all the money. Oh, you've committed all it the money. It is all committed, and you'll see in the wastewater treatment plant engineering line, there are two. Uh, I think that might be over by 300%. Okay. okay. <laughs> so it just, it's in, um, it was yeah. where we needed the engineering. And 8000 of that cost increase is actually due to um, maintaining uh, our asset management software, which we purchased earlier in the year, and that's, so that's coming in as a contract uh, price. Uh, for the half of that. I would like to offer up another cut, and that is uh, under the federal stormwater requirements, cut that from 50 to 40. Cut that from 50 to 40? Correct. That's what you said. I'll make that motion. Second. The permit has now come out, and we actually know what's ahead of us for the coming year, and 40 is adequate to get that okay. done. All, any, any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous? Up. Uh, Chris, on that asset management software and stuff, mm -hmm. can you, at this juncture, you know, determine how much you're saving? Not yet. No, only because it's not implemented. Okay. Correct. I, I can't determine it. And the one thing that's not uh, determinable by that, it isn't so much as the savings as actual performance. And that, uh, in the future, if people call. Uh, that tree that you wanted trimmed or that uh, manhole that's rattling won't get lost in the 
litany of emails that come in and phone calls every day. So it's really more of a, for us, it's a performance side. For the residents, it's a performance side. Uh, hopefully, it will stop the three calls uh, for the pothole, get it down to one. Okay. And, and then we can uh, square away our action plan. Thank you. I'm moving on to the second page under, and I guess we're paving and reconstruction, and it goes on to cleaning and maintenance. Yep. Am I on the right page? Right yep. 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 Uh, let's see. Repairs is up slightly, 2.62%. Um, only, well, and that's what we actually have for a budget this year, but it's, um, so Christy, why would it show? Oh, because we're asking. Oh, it got put in as 109. So it went up $3,000 to 2%. Uh, the next big one up is uh, street signs. Uh, that's up 12.5%. We're finally, for years and years and years, it's been $8,000. Um, we just, for instance, what we did earlier tonight, uh, I agree with the board's action, Drake Side Road, no parking either sign. I bet it'll take 20 signs, at least to get, you know, to get the message out there. Um, at $50 a sign and $20 a post, it doesn't come cheap. And um, as you've seen earlier this year, we've actually uh, was suggest that we contract out some signage. And I know the fire, sorry, police department actually contracted out with a local contractor to get some of their signage installed. Um, so uh, all that money is literally spent every single year, just replacing signs, updating stop signs, replacing street signs and addressing what just right. occurred earlier. So this now. isn't just for like high street, that kind of street sign, it's for the speed limit? Oh, it's, it's, every, it's everything. It's stop signs, speed okay. limits, yield signs. And Fire lane, no parking. We're laughing today that somebody put up their own yield sign early in the summer they, at Little River and uh, uh, Barber. And I was, it was black letters on white. How that ever happened, I still don't know, but we did replace it. Um, with one that was legal. Um, storm drainage, uh, we're looking to move from thirty to 39000 on that. It is a 30% increase. Uh, we have in the past, this past year and the end of last year, did a number of inspections with Ted Berry Company, and we've identified the pipes that need to be replaced, the repairs that need to be made. Uh, we started in the St. Cyr, Falcone, uh, those neighborhoods, um, I don't know if you remember me saying before, that's where we found other utility lines and really punched through our uh, storm drain lines. Uh, instead of waiting until these pipes collapse, we're actually planning on getting them lined, a pipe inside of a pipe, so that uh, we don't have to dig the streets up. And yeah. this is another one that follows the CIP. We started last year when we were putting it together trying to increase the value to the needs that we actually have for the work to get done. Uh, so this goes to 2022. It was that 30% uh, each increase each year to do specific projects, uh, Tuck Field being one of them for next year. And when you say a pipe inside of a pipe, you, you line it? Yeah, we actually pull in a, it's a piece of cloth um, impregnated with epoxy. They literally inflate it like a balloon. Uh, you give it a period of time to cure. Uh, open up either end, and you now have a pipe inside of a pipe. And, and those aren't real old neighborhoods that you're talking about? They're there. not. Um, Poorly built? Uh, no, acidic rain. Uh, oh, okay. The, the, I mean, uh, Brad Street, for instance. I was going to say Brad we Street. We looked at Brad Street, literally video inspected Brad Street. Six months later, the pipe collapsed. Oh. Uh, so from the inside, it looked great. The outside, it was paper thin. Hmm. So um, we're realizing that... Um, that's what's happening. It's the caustic action between the soil or in the water in the soil and how it eats out the pipes. The next, uh, let's see, overtime wages for the winter, uh, we were trying to round that up to 70000 from 67860 um, And the same thing with hired equipment, uh, we're looking for that at 55000 because we've actually spent uh, through last winter, 56,000. Um, this is one of those lines where it is what it is. 
meaning I don't know how much it's going to snow. Um, I think all of us in this room collectively try and sit down and target a, a, an amount. Um, if we have a light winter, I won't spend that, but if we don't, we don't. Um, but I may in fact spend 55. I don't object one way or the other of, uh, and actually have that down as one of my proposed cuts to trim it from 55 to 45, uh, just in an effort to keep this budget more in the 5% range than, than at the 7%. But I, I throw that out there. Maybe that's something when we get to the end, we say, okay, let's go back and grab that one, or I don't know. Okay. It's, it's with mixed emotions. But, you know, I've expressed to the Budget Committee, expressed to this board, when it snows, we react. And I, I, the money will come from someplace. But one way or the other, we're going to spend it. If it, in fact, you know, snows or ice storms, et cetera. Um, the next big, um, I'm moving down to the bottom page, one of the last three lines. Uh, the part-time wages in the wastewater treatment plan up 27.3%. Um, it has to do with the number of calls that we're getting um, and also the fact that uh, we're short on staff. I want to go back to my... Uh, we have 72.80. Um, it's literally based on $14 an hour, which is what we're paying currently, uh, 40 hours times 13 weeks. Um, this part-time person that we get in every year, um, we get, essentially, we've gotten two different people. We get a, uh, the operator who works out at Star Island comes in every winter, probably after Thanksgiving. Uh, we hire and have hired her for the last two winters to fill in. Uh, what it does is gives us another operational person to run the lab, uh, maintenance, daily inspection reports, um, really helps the department meet its goals, if you will. Um, the other half of that that occurs, because she doesn't use up all 13 weeks of that, is they actually hire, try and hire somebody during the summer to, again, help out when there's vacation periods, periods of high flow, uh, that sort of thing. So that money is, is very wisely spent and um, a very uh, cost-effective way of getting some experienced people within into the plan. I'd rather leave that and cut 10000 from snow removal, you know, when we make some value decisions. Right now, so far this year, though, you've only spent 1000 Or is that... That would have been uh, because, yeah. Um, didn't you just say the person comes in later in the year, right? After right, Island. yeah. So the wages are coming. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's, she'll be here several weeks in November and December. Okay. And and the snow budget, you still have time to go on that, right? Winter. Yeah, but it's, you. I've been told it's not going to snow. Yeah. So. No, you're right. It's, it's uh, we right. do still have time to go. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm moving on to the next page. Um, Engineering up 380 percent. It uh, we're we're looking to move from just ten thousand dollars a year to forty eight thousand dollars a year. It has to do with um, the facilities plan that just recently was completed. Um, there's a number of things that have to be done or engineered. Some of them big items uh, that I'm sure the engineering would be capitalized within a bond, but a number of the smaller items, no. Um, we'd have to pay for those as we go along. And that's, this is, this budget line is in direct relationship to what the facilities plan has told us. And it also includes the $8,000, uh, the other half the of other our half. asset management. The right. asset management program that we have is half uh, stormwater, half sewer, wastewater treatment plant. So we've split it between the two accounts. And, and last year it was budgeted 10000 Yes. And so far this year, you've spent eighty-one thousand. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's all related to 
it's all related to the condition of the wastewater treatment plant, the system, the force mains, um, all that. Okay, all of that. I mean, that's not a, that's, I mean, I'm just putting that out there, that, that's not a frill. No, I mean, no that, it's that's not, not a frill. That's not a, something I'd like to do, that's something. I have to do. It's what the facilities plan told us we need to do. Need to do. Anybody else? To offset that uh, in the middle heating fuel, line 4110, we had requested 40. I like to cut it to 30 because the three year average is lower than 30. And I have asked them and um, to trim some of their heating costs and uh, they believe that they'll be able to do it and stay within that budget line. So to offset some of that increase in engineering that I was up above, um, I'm offering a $10,000 cut there. I'd also like to down where it shows an 18.75% increase under vehicle maintenance, I'd like to cut 6,000 out of that, uh, bringing it from 38, Yeah, from the 38 down to the 32, which is the actual default line for that particular one this year. Part of the reason why is we've taken the older uh, roll-off uh, sludge truck offline. So um, I'm hoping to and will be expecting to see a reduce, uh, a reduction in what it would cost to maintain the fleet. So there's 16,000 that I hope in some way would offset the. I'll make the, a motion that we take uh, $10,000 out of the heating fuel and $6,000 out of vehicle maintenance as per his recommendation. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Um, under solid waste collection, the next department, under regular wages. Um, Chris, can I just go ahead? New equipment? Up 100% going from 10 to 20 to literally address, uh, I won't call them nickel and dime items, but they're two, four, five, and six thousand dollar items that need that probably in the facilities plan show up, if you will, to medium or low priority, but they're still integral uh, parts to the operation. As you saw earlier tonight, while I was away last week, a thirteen thousand dollar item goes and Literally, that's what it takes to keep it going. So the ten thousand this year, and there's nothing spent yet, but that that's accounted for, you think, or? Oh, I know it's accounted for. I know what okay. it's signed. All right. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. Okay. Well, he just told. Uh, he, she has told us that we're replacing one of those blowers, and the two oh. others are the same age. Yeah, and that ten thousand is actually for another issue we're working on right now. So. so. It's, and. Actually, before we move on to the okay. solid waste, and everything we're pretty much talking about right now is yes. coming from this uh, wastewater facilities right. plan. Yes. yes. All recommendations, a lot of the things in here are, are, are medium the... high priority. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, something that we really need to start considering uh, right. getting to, which you have partly done so with this budget. Yes. And I also want to say I appreciate you cutting lines that you have determined that you can cut and still are able to uh, ensure that this work begins to get done. Thank right. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It just, you just have to go back to it with a different mindset and a sharper pencil, and that's what it took. Um, with that being said, under saw waste collection, uh, we are anticipating someone retiring this year. Uh, if that happens, I that accounts up 2000 higher than I need it to be up. That would be some of the differences in salaries, uh, even with promoting some people internally, if that's how it plays out. Um, I default to what Christy said. I don't know if that's something we want to jump to right at this moment or leave to the discussion in the end. It's, as I apologize, I did not sit down with her and show her my sharp pencil work before I left on vacation. Leave that said if okay 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other actions yeah, by other yeah, people. Yeah. Okay, so let's. <clears throat> the part time wages is up 27%. Um, there again, it's um, five se seasonal rubbish people. Um, this is for that 13 weeks out of the year. $14 an hour times 40 hours. Um, it's um, it's beach trash. It's the influx of 100,000 people. This is not additional staff. This is the same five people, if I can get them every year, uh, to work at that starting what, wage of 14. What, what were they working at this year? 11. 11. So this line, this part-time wage line for solid waste collection, as well as the part-time wages under highway. These are the people that are picking up the additional beach waste, meaning rubbish recycling. We also have beach crew, which empties the uh, containers along the beaches, does the blowing of the sidewalks for uh, us to go down and sweep, and is also supplemental to our highway crew for when we're out doing trash, being able to have others. Um, we have not, just as you've heard, from many of the other departments. We have not had all those spots filled. Um, some of it lends itself to the $11. At $14 an hour, it is, you're doing physical hard labor. You're swinging trash barrels. You're, you're doing some of these things and they can go make money elsewhere. Does that fix the problem for you know, labor shortage? No, but what we're trying to do is make it competitive so we can have an opportunity. Um, I have a question. As far as I know that this town voted, Mr. Town Manager, if you can help me out, to have all commercial trash picked up every day down the beach area, we, we do pick up the commercial trash at the beach every day. Is it possible that this board, the town, however the process needs to go about, could consider limiting the amount of bins that they pick up similar to the way we do with the condos? It's possible. That had been petitioned to town meeting, I think. Well, that was a little bit different. That was <clears throat> petitioned to eliminate pickup. No, I'm talking like similar to what we do with, we have a restriction on condos. We do. So why can't we have a restriction on all businesses and residents? That would be something the board would have to discuss. And Just to, I mean, for decision. the sake of our public works department, if nothing else. Well, there, there are some restrictions. Um, one restaurant should name, remain nameless is literally limited to 27 containers because that's the length of the curb uh, that's there divided by three feet. That's the formula that this department uses. Uh, we're on record with that particular entity and, and they know it, that that's, that's the physical limit. We've had multiple discussions with them. If you have more glass than that and you have more cardboard than that, you'll have to bring it to the transfer station your own. And they do. They they take they manage their excess. Um, my my caution with just saying commercial. It's fairly evident to me with what we experienced this summer that that is one of those critical services that needs to happen on a daily basis to keep the beach area odor free, looking presentable clean and, and um, I'd rather say that I'm not handling cardboard than than say I'm not handling commercial waste that would be a big help because cardboard isn't putrid uh, it's bulky it would allow me to divert possibly a truck away from recycling towards collection waste but after what I experienced we experienced this summer um, given the density of buildings and density of people down there I would say it's almost imperative that we collect trash, uh, especially what I would consider putrid waste, uh, food waste, vegetable waste, beer bottles on a daily basis. Oh, I defer to the board. Yeah. Yeah, we've been down this road uh, too many times, and I don't think this is the time to talk about uh, it. This is the totally budget that we're aware of. Every single line item and under waste collection is up by a substantial amount. That's why I'm bringing it up. So. 
May I, Mr. Chairman? Hey, you may. Go ahead. Thank you. I, I, I haven't had uh, an opportunity to uh, say anything because I've been thinking. Um, and uh, we, we most recently had uh, a resignation from an appointed official uh, to an advisory committee in the town of Hampton. Uh, the reason, and, and here's the paper, was about a tort action for unreimbursed expenses. Mm -hmm. The significant thing in your budget, um, the glaring thing in your budget to me, is what's not in there. Uh, and where it is, is in the Warren articles. And I know, and you know, um, when you total them up for your initial Warren articles, uh, it approaches $12 million yes. of ask. Let me say that again for those that uh, um, uh, ascribe to uh, not pursuing revenue in this town. Uh, $12 million, and I don't think any of that is uh, uh, fluff. In fact, I know it's not. And uh, some of it, if it goes south, imperils uh, the very existence of this town. And uh, tens and tens, if not... Uh, dozens and dozens of tens of millions of dollars to the state of New Hampshire, let alone what will happen to the business communities in this town, paying their mortgages. So while this is not an operational uh, discussion, uh, what's not in your budget in these zero lines, uh, if we as leaders in this town look at your ask on the uh, warrants, uh, and they go from uh, the main force line they go from roads, they go to seawalls that are falling down, that do indeed look third world down at North Beach. Uh, it's problematic. And when Selectman Barnes answers the call of this, this, uh, this grasp and this need for the town, uh, we talk about uh, enterprise value systems. We talk about this, this cost of picking up trash. We talk about our workers' compensation costs. We talk about the labor. We talk as uh, the finance director has uh, ascertained, done the great work with Gatsby 45, that this town has unaddressed, uh, and we see it out in Lafayette Road th this year. You talked about it tonight, and Slugman Bridal brought it up. Pipes are literally falling in. And uh, our depreciation expense and our auditors will be in here soon to reemphasize this. It's 10% of our budget a year. It's about two and a half to three million dollars a year, and it's never been addressed. And uh, this uh, is is the year where we are really reaching the tipping points, and it's with your department. And uh, none of this is state of the art. None of this is luxury. Um, and so when we look at your budget and we're going through these motions, the real infrastructure, the real need uh, is glaring. And it's hugely problematic. And when people, uh, and we'll be talking about this, and I'm, I'm happy to address this, and happy to entertain people that want to oppose uh, this town looking for revenue for people to get a free ride. And we have close to $12 million in public works on this warrant articles. And that's just public works. So it's coming up, and it really makes it difficult, Mr. Chairman, and fellow board members, and citizens, if you're watching, to even try and grapple with this budget and approve it outside of the context about which two or three million or which four million or which five million do you think out of your twelve million dollar ask the voters will approve right. and it's it's uh that's the real salience here and if you're a leader and if you're a business owner and if you have any business sense that's the adult end of the swimming pool that's where you put on the big boy and the big girl pants and i, I wanted to get that out there and i'm happy to listen to you're going to cut five thousand here and i'm happy to hear it's five points but it's really not that thank you mr chairman Thank you, please. Oh, let's see. Um, we were at uh, Saw Waste Collection. Um, that's the actual, um, that's the people that actually do the, do the, to drive the trucks to actually collect. I, I didn't want it, someone to think that that's like the transfer station because that's its own separate line. Um, so um, there's a possibility for 2,000 uh, to be cut there. Um, Which line's that? That would have been under uh, 43213, uh, 1100 S, then SWC, the regular very top wages, line, regular, regular wages. wages. Is it 1,000 of it? 2,000, possibly. But there again, it's it's based on... Um, the wage ones we want to meet with Christy and right. just make okay. sure we haven't um, I mean, okay. cross Chris feels right. I'm, I'm saving a quarter penny. Well, well, <laughs> at, at best. Yeah, yeah, the wage ones, I think we just need to confer yeah, with Christy yeah, because fine. she did go through and look at all the SEA and Teamster right. 
steps yeah. and things. We don't want to miscalculate. Right. Moving on to uh, solid waste uh, transportation, and then and then the, the final big department is uh, transfer station. Um, I'd move to cut out of solid waste tipping fees because uh, there again I, I really looked at the the tonnages and how it's tracking, uh, eliminating seventeen thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven dollars, and out of the. Uh, the waste hauling because if the tonnage is, is not there then the, 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 the transportation I'd like to eliminate two thousand six hundred and thirty dollars from that line. So so what line was that Chris please? That would be under uh, fifty three ten WT waste tipping fees. Okay. And then fifty three twenty WT waste hauling. And how much are you talking about? Uh, the first amount was seventeen nine twenty seven off that off that four seventy four thousand dollar line, and um, two thousand six hundred and thirty off of the uh, waste hauling line. I'll move those two. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. And um, let's see. Tr under transfer station. Uh, it's kind of a plus and a minus. I see uh, one line goes up 25%. Uh, um, it's in the part-time, there again, part-time wages. Um, we always have uh, one person for uh, during the summer to help with the peak, and that's really where this line is, and I think the same thing. It went from... $11.14 to $14. To $14, right. And then there was also a trade-off with uh, the grade for the um, heavy equipment operator. Currently, we're always yes. paying the temporary service out of rank because they're always operating the heavy equipment. Um, so their job description should be heavy equipment. Um, the offset was $280, so that's in here somewhere, too. Right. Mm. And But that it is further um, uh, reduced uh, under staff development. There's uh, for instance, uh, we're ask, it looks like the periods that we're asking for less money. We went down $700 under staff development. It's a 28% loss uh, overall for the department. For the transfer station, it's, it's down 0.38%. So checks and balances tended to, to uh, work themselves up. Other than that, um, those are the changes. You do see under... Sewer line maintenance at 148. Um, we're asking for there again 200 uh, 200 thousand going into the coming year. Um, Jennifer can probably help me. Yep, that, that is the CIP as well. These are planned projects. Um, so the engineering you saw on the other lines are for actually 2019 projects. The dollars you're seeing here are for the construction of the 18 projects that we're working on now. Uh, moving on. Um, Exeter Sewer Agreement um, is the last big hit, coming up at 237% 200, increase, as the uh, uh, board may or may not recall. Uh, our original agreement with Exeter for everybody over in the War Warner Lane, Donna's Lane area, because that's the section of town that discharges into Exeter. Uh, they've approved a $40 million bond issue um, to meet uh, federal requirements for their uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, they're actually building a plant. Um, they went up to 23647 for the same agreement. From? 7000 Yeah. I think this kind of speaks to the point that everybody's making that we're providing a lot of free rides around here. That, that people, you know, I mean, I mean, your department needs a lot of money. And people have to somehow come up with the money for your department to operate. And you know, like like Exodus says to us, hey, we, we need we need to raise it up 237 percent. Right. So you guys are going to pay it. 
and then we leave ours the same as it is and then we struggle 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 and it doesn't get fixed so i mean like i agree 100 percent that the 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 trash collection the sewage we've got to take a really serious look at it and say you know are we what are we providing and what, what are people paying for and i know rick that it's been brought up and brought up and brought up but i think it, you know, we don't need to discuss it right now tonight, but it's something we seriously, seriously have to think about. Well, it's, it's what's coming to roost is what Selectman Bean basically stated, and that over the last, and, and maybe before we did Gatsby 34, is it? 45. 45. You really, we didn't really have a, a factual handle on what that depreciation was, which was uh, Pipes deteriorating, uh, the primary effluent pumps in the in the station being the, the same one since 1974, um, and now that we've come to realize that we are depreciating at 10 percent per year, and that that it's now coming to roost, and we're we're coming to grips with it, and and in some respects we're going to be playing some catch up for a number of years, but I I would also agree with and being that if we don't start to play some of that catch up, and it really is up to the voters in the number of warrant articles that they can or want to or don't want to approve, is how much we play catch up uh, because it'll only get more expensive and, and it's in some ways um, it's unavoidable. You know, it, I look at that. It's up to the voters, but it's up to us and up to, uh, up to the departments to get out there and promote it. To make exactly. sure that they're aware of what they need. It, it first was up to us to bring this forward. Yeah. Um, well, and it's you, up to us to promote you and the it and get it out there. The, the 90000 we had the study done, and then to bring it forward and to have an honest discussion about yeah. it. Right. Can I ask a question, Mr. Sure. Chairman? Is this report, is this public? Or I know we received it. When it was released to you, it essentially became Okay, because public. there's some really good information in here about what needs to be done correct and actually i know no one wants to read a 300 page document or whatever it is but just reading the first executive summary just those first few pages um really interesting these systems will require comprehensive upgrades in order to provide continued reliably reliable and safe service for the town right. okay Town should continue working with known high or not that one. We got another one in here that's really good. Um, the Hampton Beach area has been identified as a significant source of direct inflow salt water during high tide events, in addition to occupying potential sewage conveyance and treatment capacity. This explains everything that needs to be done. And then they have charts in here, they got a bunch of information that. Stresses Section the, four breaks it all right, down as to which right, cost, projects at what roughly cost. It's about thirteen thousand something for the first year. They're estimating thirteen million for the thirteen million I'm in the sorry. first phase. Thirteen million <laughs> yeah, for the second phase. Um, yeah. But it's something that I don't know this whole thing, but I think it really it could be a selling point that this work is important, and maybe this work shouldn't just be the town's responsibility to get done. That's all I have to say. I did have my staff go back, and I'll, and I'll release it to, to you tomorrow. I, I want them to put a header to it. But I had them go back and look at the previous facility study. Is the information contained within the new study, like, totally new? No. Um, just read you this one paragraph. Five areas of immediate concern. This is in 2006. Equipment and ventilation modifications to the headworks, meaning where the waste comes into the plant. Right now, uh, ventilation is so poor, everything corrodes. Uh, influent pump station modifications, meaning uh, the same pumps that were installed in 1974 are still in service. That's older than me, by the way, for anyone that cares to uh, uh, Heating, <laughs> ventilation, air conditioning modifications to the <laughs> operations building. Uh, the sewer gases in the operations building are they're not really good um, installation of sufficiently sized emergency generator that's something that we re-identified two years ago um, so so some of these things have, have always been there um, and so we're getting to the point where 
that can no longer be overlooked. Yeah. But I'll get you that memo. And then you can see they compared for you 2006 to 2017. And you look and say, it's some of the same projects. So we got away. We postponed it for 10 years. It's really getting to the point where we really can't postpone it much longer. At least not all the projects. Okay. I'm done with budget presentation questions. I think you've answered most of the, well, let's, I'm, I'm good. Thank answered you. Answered most of our questions. You know, I think, I think, I would just assume wait on this budget. Mr. That's Chairman, what I, I would just assume wait and. I, I think your, your comments are very fresh, and, and, uh, and, and as part of that, that waiting, Mr. Chairman, if we could, uh, um, have a discussion through the town manager about that ask on the Warren articles and mm -hmm. somehow because the lines are zero but they're in the warrant and they're exigent so right. if we incorporate that okay you've got almost 12 million of ask but what two or three or four or five and prioritize those and then we can wrap arounds because those really are essentially part of the budget yes I would agree. whether the voters go for it or not and I would make a recommendation that 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 we and you include the budget committee in the, on that report and stuff and get working before you have to go before them, so they're well aware of what's going on, what 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 the needs are, and that it's not just wants. Right. You know, I, yes. I would recommend. Yeah, it's it's we haven't dreamed it up. It isn't like I know that. Yeah, I agree with you 100. percent We. Yeah. Okay. You know, Sad thing is, there'll be people that say you have dreamed it up. <laughs> well, the, the only comment that I have heard to that is, geez, I never heard about this before. Yeah. Um, but the comment, the discussion with, with that particular gentleman was, hey, it's in the 2006 report. And um, it's just that we never really read it or grasped it um, in its, in, to its full extent. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Can I sneak out before you move on? Not about public speak. words, but about a couple other. Oh yeah. Well, I thought you said, "Can you sneak out?" No, sneak out <laughs> on the table. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Sneak up. <laughs> sneak up, not sneak out. Um, the tax collector has kindly reminded me that we need to have our tax rate set. So I have been reaching out to DRA in regards to the tax rate, and there are a couple of uh, items for to be brought to your guys' attention. The MS-535 is a form that the board has to sign. It's just saying that we have received the audit. It's the form that the auditors fill out. So they take all the numbers from the audit and generate it into a DRA form. Right. I have not been able to get DRA to remove the draft because I wanted, was hoping I could get you guys to sign this tonight, but I don't think we would like to sign something that says draft. So as soon as that watermark is removed, I would like to be able to get this form signed by the board. Um, but usually you guys vote to sign it. So I didn't know if you'd be willing to vote tonight and hopefully within the next day or so I will get the draft mark removed by DRA so that the board can sign this and it won't hold up uh, us moving forward with the tax rate. The motion that we approve to sign it when it's ready. Second. Motion, second. All in favor? You have the approval of what? Will you leave it in uh, Christina's office or something? Yep. And or I'll in your let you office? all, yep, and I'll send out a note letting everyone know that it's ready. And then the other thing that the board can, uh, I guess, start to think about or may have already been thinking about is whether they would like to use any of the unassigned uh, fund balance to offset the tax rate. Um, at the end of 2016, the unassigned fund day. balance was 7 million one hundred and thirty six thousand and fifty four dollars seven million one hundred and thirty six thousand and fifty four dollars so it was up I think the year before it was like six million so okay. it's up about a million and that percentage would be that's the unassigned fund balance yeah and isn't there a percent a recommended there's a recommended percentage from DRA that's a big calculation last year when the tax rate was set um, they break it down Five, I believe, is the minimum, and I 17 is the max. Yeah, 17 is the max. And, right. last and we're year, about 10? Yeah, we're right in the, we're very close to the 10, yeah. Maybe slightly over now with the 7 million. Last year, when the tax rate was set, um, let's see here, the 10% retained was 6,057,000. 
8,829. And when we did it, we were at 9.88%. We had $5,986,520. And last so, year, we, we allocated how much? A uh, million dollars. million dollars. A million dollars. So this year, these are just estimates. I will come back and have the DRA, because they go through all the estimated revenues and tell us what the actual rooms and meals and all those things will be. But right now, if the board chose to do nothing with what I have calculated for my estimated revenues and what the board, what the voters approved for appropriations, you're looking at a tax rate of approximately $6.52. In 16, it was $6.41. So it's up about 11 uh, cents there. If the board chose to use a million dollars of the unassigned fund balance, it would drop it to $6.22. So that would put it under what it was last year. And that's um, what I would recommend you do. So. And we need to make that decision by... Before yeah, you have set? to make it before we set the tax rate. So the tax collector would probably like a decision sooner than later. In all reality, it's all about when the tax bills go out and then they have to collect them. So I mean, they like does it to have to be made before you send that form in? No, not before I send in the MS-535, but it has to be made before the tax rate can be set. So Once, next once week. they send in the 535, yep. since they already have all the other data required except for that, yep. they will set an appointment immediately for us to set the tax rate. Right which is done by a computer and over the telephone. At that point in time, we need to have that figure, Correct. and that could happen in a relatively short period of time, even before your next meeting. Yes. That's why I'm recommending that you actually expend a million dollars of that surplus immediately to reduce taxes tonight. As soon as you feel pleasured to do it, yeah. Okay, and this is, how many, now how many years have we done this? Every year since I've been here, we reduce taxes with a surplus. I'm comfortable to make the motion. Okay. I, I, and, and, and if, having said that, before you even ask for a second, uh, I don't have, and, and I do generically, I understand the ratios, the margins, the percentages. Uh, we're looking at an extraordinary amount of ask right now. Um, we're well within the margins, and uh, I would be more comfortable, and I will not vote tonight for any any amount um, for us next meet week. And we can always meet. Um, we can all rally the troops, Mr. Chairman, um, and we may want to be more aggressive uh, on that. We've got twenty million dollars in our investment uh, uh, portfolio. Remember, uh, this is what you voted on last spring. Let me just finish. I, I will not vote for it tonight, and I want a more comprehensive uh, data dump and uh, situational awareness from the uh, finance director, and I want to uh, incorporate a more vigorous argument rather than just do a million, a million, a million, which is what we've traditionally done while I've been on this board. Thank you. And I would like to actually wait to, I could actually speak with you a little bit about it before I made a decision. I, I, I've already talked with Christy. Uh, I'm comfortable. There's a motion. There's a motion. I know. If we, uh, I mean, if, if Mr. Bean feels that there's, there's more, we could, I mean, we could do the million now, and then if you decide, if Chris, you've already looked at it pretty good, right? I'm just doing estimates. I know DRA now, um, with their new automated system, as soon as uh, they have this and we go, they haven't gone over the estimated revenues, the, every uh, town is given an advisor. The advisor hasn't contacted to go over the estimated revenues that were due on September 1st yet. So we have to do those things. And then they generate forms and they can break down what every million dollars or 500,000 or whatever um, you put towards the tax rate, it can automatically show you. We can plug it right in and it'll show you exactly what the tax rate is going to be. So as Mr. Bean stated, if you guys wanted to have a meeting later in this week, if DRA moves that quickly, they may not, but if they did move that quickly, if we wanted to meet later, we would be able to sit down and I can show you exactly, you know, if someone wanted to use a, a larger amount or a smaller amount, we can sit right there at the computer and okay. type it in. That, that would require an emergency meeting. The thing is, I just want to say this, because it, it's been referred that it's always a million. It isn't always a million. Uh -huh. It's been many times 600,000 yeah, and whatever. I have no problem with it being more, and I would rather see it to be more. Yeah, and I did calculate what a million and a half does. Let me look here for you real quick and tell you. Okay. 
If, if that happened and, and it came in and we needed to do it, we need to have a meeting, right? Yes, sir. You need to post the health card in advance. 24 hours. 24 hours in advance. People have any problem coming back to a meeting? No. I have no, no as problem. As long as it's in, in the evening. Could we have we could have a meet a public meeting upstairs if this room was oh, sure. available? Yeah, you could meet anywhere. All right. As long as people are willing for that, I would go along with what we're saying. And can you get us more data? I can get you more data. Please. Mm -hmm. So you had a motion. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm okay, okay with you know, I really my <clears throat> I thought she was recommending a million. Um, I would rather see it to be more. Okay, so you're withdrawing a motion? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm all set. Okay. We don't have a motion, so... Okay. Great. And uh, we will get this MS-535 and get moving on with the tax rate. I'll keep you guys posted. Super. Thank you. Yep. Approval of minutes. September 25th, sealed non-public. Make a motion. Second. Regina, seconded by Rusty. All in favor? We don't need it. That's in public. Yeah, okay. Uh, October 2nd, I just think if we needed a roll, a roll call. No. No. Uh, October 2nd, sealed, non public. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, I'm going to abstain on that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Abstain. Uh, New business. I, I do have some old business. Mr. Okay, Chairman. sorry. Thank you. Uh, the town assessor, and, and uh, this this goes to the uh, the, the basis of uh, the revenue in this town. Sixty six percent of the uh, operating costs in the state and towns are funded by property taxes, and uh, there are some in the, in, in town. Um, in most recently, last week's paper that want to um, uh, give favor to the state. On a consistent basis, and that um, they're they're timid about um, uh, um, running afoul of them. And I want to read this editorial and then some um, f some notes from assessors on HB 324, which directly impacts this town and some of our sister towns. This is from Ed Tinker. It was dated uh, 1359 on 13 uh, October 2017. So I wanted to update the board on some recent news as to utilities and utility valuations. As such, I have attached three recent articles dealing with the Eversource appeal of their power plant in Bow, New Hampshire. The judge in this case, Richard McNamara, sided with the utility, granting a valuation of $66 million for tax year 2012 and 67 for 2013. As you will read in these articles, these revised values are just 42% of the assessed value of $159 million used by the town. If these values are upheld, in, it could cost the town a minimum refund of $8.5 million and reduce the town's tax base by 8% should also be noted that the company relied on its net book value in its argument for a lower assess value. And this approach utilizes an aggressively depreciated value for each of its components and is typically used for IRS tax purposes. This method is quite similar to the unit method, which has been a hot topic lately and continues to be as the state, DRA, is still pushing to implement the use of this unit method for assessing utilities. And of course, our largest piece of property in this town is with Next Terror. And we do, in fact, have a tort issue commencing and in place with them now. The third article is the most recent and outlines Eversource's plans to sell its, its plants in Bow for $75 million. These sales were references as an asset auction. It will be interesting to see how the appeal and argument go over in fair market value and how that turns out. As Hampton is involved with the Seabrook nuclear power plant, it will be very interesting to see how this all shakes out, as we have seen on the valuation at the full plant level go down year after year. So we've got that from Mr. Chenker, which speaks to the efficacy and the urgency of municipalities that do, in fact, uh, engage with uh, big commercial 
uh, uh, property owners and the state of New Hampshire in HB 324. And I will say, as uh, a gentleman that sits on your board, Mr. Chairman, and wears two hats, uh, there's significant pressure from towns, many of them uh, much smaller than ours, uh, with boats that are pushing this uh, HB 324. Mr. Tinker additionally talked and sent the uh, talking points for those, and importantly, I want to go over that. And there are myriad law firms, there are myriad um, uh, attorneys and appraisers that have addressed this in the September 19, 2017 memo on House Bill 324. It speaks directly about some of the state employees and their attorneys and their adjusters and their appraisers that they're way off the mark. And these are words by judges where rightfully these cases go uh, when it's past the BTLA and in, into Superior Court. So if you'll bear with me, I'll give you some of the, uh, the highlights, but it speaks to the uh, efficacy and the utility and the, and the righteousness of this board using Attorney Gerald to advance our positions uh, with the state. Uh, and I would urge you to listen closely um, to this document about how it refers to people in state government. And these are not my words, uh, and they're not subjective, and they come from judges. Uh, men and women that wear black robes. And it says, the facts and impacts of New Hampshire HB 324 seeks to implement the New Hampshire Department of Revenue Administration's flawed valuation methodology that has been rejected by the New Hampshire Supreme Court. So you see, the people in Concord are trying to in place something that has been rejected by the Supreme Court. It's based on a false narrative and many incorrect assumptions. The unintended consequences of the bill are significant and it will negatively affect taxpayers across New Hampshire, tens of thousands who will see property taxes increase. Continuing on with this, HB 324 would require municipalities to use DRA assessments for some of the largest and most valuable electric generating plants in the region, including, number one here, the Seabrook Nuclear Power Plant, which is our largest uh, taxpayer and uh, for which we uh, um, have a uh, affiliated uh, tort uh, response. HB 24 includes thousands of miles of power lines and gas and oil and pipeline rights of way. Fiction. The New Hampshire DRA is best equipped and best qualified to assess the utility property in New Hampshire. Most, among the most important components in any appraisal is the correct conclusion of the highest and best use of the property. In its most recent decisions in PSNH versus 55 New Hampshire communities, communities in the, the New Hampshire Electric, Electric Cooperative, the BTLA wrote, in summary, the board finds a major overall weakness of Tagarden, the PSNH expert, in his appraisals, is that they contain at best only a very cursory highest and best use analysis. So these are the, 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 the folks that the DRA is ascribing that we follow. The BTLA, the BTLA further criticized the DRAs. These are our good friends at the state. Their methodology when applied to PSNH's primary expert. The board finds that in material respect, Mr. Teagarden appears to confuse and distort the basic and distinct concepts of income and cash flow. This is evident from his own explanation of, of income approach, where his calculations lead him to estimate the net future cash flow. In addition, his appraisals do not present specific revenue or expense information, making his resulting opinions of value less credible. These are the folks hanging around our good friends at the state that um, some um, would uh, offer bended knee and supplications to. For all of these reasons, the board finds that Mr. Gard to the gardens, this is the people that the DRA embraces, are understated and the correction would dramatically increase the market value indications arrived at his income approach. Continue, I'm just scanning this article, Mr. Chairman, and I'll wrap up shortly. And again, this is the, these are the folks that the DRA wants to take the job from Mr. Tinker, take the job from the selectmen, and mandate it with the state. The BTLA determined that Tagarden and Dickman appraisals did not result in credible opinions of market value. BTLA found that Dickman's unit appraisal and allocations had, his, had many of the same flaws. Dickman's appraisals did not result in credible opinions of market value. 
there's a uh, chart in this, and it shows the DRA values and the settled values, and the DR values in here, and there are myriad. And I'm just going to go briefly through some of the percentages on these, where the DRA's value is a fraction of what the settled value is. On the Riverside Hydro, these are Berlin plants, DRA value 14 million. The settled value was 28 million. In Gorham, $12 million of v, uh, DRA value. Settled value, $25 million. Uh, in uh, Monroe, $131 million for DRA value, $198 million in set, settled value. The DRA is off on these cases 52%, 48%, 66%. And I would tell you when I see Tom Esquire nodding his head, Chinker, Mr. Chinker has fought this battle, Mr. Gerald has. And these are the people in the state that those that would resign and say that they're worried about offending the state. These are valuations that are 50%. And if it's good enough for them, it's not good enough in Hampton. And uh, anybody that pays taxes in this town, anybody that pays business profits tax in this town, anybody that pays uh, state taxes, BET, um, wants to fight for their money. And that's what they expect us for. And so there's precedent in this, this uh, utilization with our town attorney. There's precedent in, in giving a good scrub to any evaluation in any assessment. And you'll find that the bigger the assessed value is, the more lawyers come out, the closer they are to Concord. And this legislation is to usurp local control, it's to usurp local power, and it's basically been found, as these folks have said in this article that Mr. Tinker provided in sworn testimony on, in, before committee, that it's been found unconstitutional. But it, there remains a fight that's going on with that. So I wanted to share that to back up uh, what some will not support in this town, um, and some have published comments through this reporter. But uh, I'm, I'm proud to ascribe to the efforts of this board in its majority, and I'm proud to ascribe to the efforts of the town manager and uh, Mr. Gerald and Mr. Tinker on the whole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me ask one question, if I may. Could you give me the game plan for our representatives up there? to oppose this what, what I, you're just given a really good description of it we have four representatives I believe from Hampton one at large from uh, not at large shared with Seabrook or yes, Hampton sir. Falls and we have a state senator have you guys gotten together to come up with a game plan to fight this I, I know that um, the uh Representative Edgar, Representative Cushing, and myself are against it. I do not know about um, uh, our other legislator. Um, have you guys had a meeting to, to no, we discuss meeting. it? We haven't had a meeting. This is this is an ongoing uh, a battle. And uh, again, when, when people in this town and when there are people that opine about how we can't uh, challenge the state, uh, these kinds of comments that were in the paper last week only serve to weaken only serve to weaken our efforts uh, and to I, protect the economic. I oh, have the floor, Mr. Chairman. Okay. okay. And I serve up there. Now, is they serve to weaken and undermine our efforts, and they prevent this town from pursuing economic justice, which is a civil right. And uh, many people don't have the time to research this. Many people can talk about how what the campaign looks like. But uh, Cordell Johnson, our advocate, is on top of this. Uh, reasonably minded people are, are for this. Rationally minded people are for this. And uh, those that uh, would offer supplications, and I say again, bend a knee to the state. This is the state in action, and they're shorting. The DRA has attempted to uh, for tens and tens and hundreds of millions of dollars of assessed valuation. i just ask one more time the game plan for our representative. I would suggest you pick up the phone and call your representative, Mr. Chairman. I'm talking to him right here. Yeah, well, I, I just told you what I, I suggest you do. Okay, so there's no game plan. Mr. Chairman, don't put words in my mouth. I, then I asked what the game plan is. That's a simple... I don't consider this a funny matter. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, new business, state aid water quality testing. Mr. Chairman, I had uh, previously emailed you and you so graciously put on the uh, agenda for this evening uh, uh, an article uh, that has uh, been published in the Manchester Union Leader. Uh, Representative Messner, Representative Cushing, Representative uh, Edgar, folks of us that uh, have campaign plans in Concord, Mr. Chairman, uh, were in Concord with the governor. Uh, and he uh, announced that there would be some uh, water funding coming out. I will read this article. 
Mr. Gerald, who's uh, worked with uh, Mr. Ballestero. We have uh, carcinogens in the water. There's going to be a disposal of money. And I will read the article and ask Mr. Gerald and his esteemed professionalism to perhaps um, offer the commentary uh, that we can put in a verbiage and uh, get a message to the governor uh, on this dispersal of funds. And I would ask that he sit up here at the table now, please. This was in the uh, Manchester Union Leader. And it was an article that was dated uh, 8 October. And again, this was after a meeting there where the governor announced that to Minnie Messler, myself, Mike Edgar, and Randy Cushing. Just as New Hampshire is dealing with more contained wells and water systems around the state, money is on its way to help. Hundreds of millions of dollars are set to head out to the Granite State communities for projects to improve drinking water. We usually have just the problem and less so the funds, said Robert Scott of the State Department of Environmental Services. Scott sits on the New Hampshire Drinking Water and Groundwater Advisory Commission. In November, this group will choose several major projects to fund from a fund of more than $200, a $200 million settlement with ExxonMobil over MTBE. Jillian Lane lives in the Breakfast Hill area of Greenland, not far from Cloakley Landfill a site of heightened concern regarding perifluorochemical contamination. There's a lot of needs, she said. We have those same needs. It was ex like hundreds of others in their own, in the community. Lanes' family is on a well, and they put in their own filtration. It was expensive to have it installed. The maintenance is going to be expensive and long term, and there's a simple solution to this problem, which is getting all of these residents on a single regulated source of water. We've had some of those people come before our board in some of those developments. This commission is considering 200000 to study whether Portsmouth public water can supply the Breakfast Hill area. In Litchfield, public water systems are also in line for funding to assist in the transition from PFC contaminated private wells. Dover, Lee, Plastow, Salem, and Wyndham, and others are at the top of a long list of communities seeking financial assistance to work around MTBE. While millions will be spent, officials plan to invest some of the settlement to ensure that it pays out for years to come. We want people coming to us and figuring out how we can take this money, much like LCHP did in their process, and leverage it so that we're a piece of a very successful laying out of water lines in the state of New Hampshire, said Senate President Chuck Morris. The commission is hoping to approve its first round of projects on November 2nd so the Executive Council can sign off and the money can go out before the end of the year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Having read that, uh, Mark is uh, prepared to offer some advice, perhaps with the town manager, uh, with uh, Dr. Ballestero, on what our needs are, what our projects are, what our testing is, what wells need to be uh, uh, protected, and uh, what we can take to uh, reduce and minimize carcinogens in our water supply. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. As part of the uh, recent um, acquisition uh, of Aquarian Water Company by Eversource, uh, the board uh, had authorized uh, my office and the manager to bring to the PUC's attention a number of concerns we had especially at this critical time about aquariums wells, which are showing the increased levels of PFCs. Um, as part of that, uh, before the uh, acquisition was approved by the PUC, uh, this board and the town of Northampton reached an agreement, which is on file with our town clerk, with Eversource and Aquarian, that addressed a number of these concerns, one of which uh, happened to be involving the PFCs. And Aquarian committed, with Eversource's backing, to investigate sources of P PFCs in its wells, further investigation, as well as to remediate uh, through uh, treatment facilities. Um, and uh, there is a pathway by which those treatment facilities will be implemented, particularly for the Mill Road well field. That's a critical, because the, these things can all be studied to death, but the actual remediation of something is something else again, which is even more important, getting it done. And I would suggest to the board that uh, this, these funds 
uh, that, uh, that we ur the board urge Aquarian to apply for these funds to, to uh, conduct remediation even more quickly than it was even thinking about now that these funds have become available. Um, and also to, uh, to back up the efforts of Representative Mesmer and others to, uh, to have those funds be utilized to, to, uh, for the Coakley uh, uh, PFCs. Uh, we actually have a quarterly meeting with Aquarian Water Company coming up soon uh, where we can urge that and urge them to take advantage of this funding because this is a public water supply and very important that, um, that the remediation be done as quickly as possible. So those are my suggestions to the board in two areas. One has to do with Aquarian's wells and the other has to do with backing the efforts as to Coakley. So what are you looking for from the board? Uh, your your authorization to uh, to uh, urge Aquarian to uh, take advantage of these funds that are become, going to become available. I'll make the motion. I'll certainly second it. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Yeah, a, a quick discussion, and I, I would like uh, uh, Dr. Ballesteros' uh, imprimatur on this as well and his uh, his input, and I think he needs to be dialed in tomorrow morning. Again, these funds are going out as early as to November. Decisions are being made. This is a shotgun uh, discharge of funds, uh, just a couple of weeks. Yeah. Mr. Welch can get involved. And then, uh, as you rightfully point out, Mr. Uh, Chairman, about campaigns, is uh, to get uh, the uh, delegation involved uh, and uh, the majority of Minority leaders and uh, uh, our our executive counselor as well to uh, knock on the hatch for money. And I would, when do you think you would be able to get um, Ballastero uh, Aquarium on a conference call? And say, what can we get? We're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, of aid. I think we can we can uh, get. He he is someone. Uh, thanks to the board's uh, directives to uh, involve Dr. Ballastero is. Uh, Pretty much on call as, as he can be. Now we just uh, t timing is of the essence, and it, it, it should be no later than uh, um, Thursday afternoon. Sure. Thank you. Any other discussion? No the discussion I have is, uh, and, and I, I'm for this, but we have about 30 percent of this town that doesn't have the option to have uh, aquarium. They all have their own wells. What are we doing for them? Um, what Aquarian has committed to do is to uh, not only um, uh, install new monitoring wells itself, but to analyze private wells within the sphere where they believe their own wells may be receiving uh, PFCs. And as I understand it, DES is paying for the analysis of those wells. So that is going to take into number of private wells will be will be sampled as well how do we how do we know what what wells those are or where they're at uh, we'll have to get a fix from uh, from Aquarian on exactly which wells they mean they, they were working with DES to to ascertain which ones they were going to test which they thought would be uh, within the same area of influence that's resulting in the PFC showing up in their wells Mr. Chairman, Selectman Bridle makes an excellent point. The article quotes uh, a state official talking about um, miles and miles of lines of fresh water, and I would incorporate the needs of those uh, that are not on the Aquarian well system uh, in, in this uh, request, this ask for uh, funds to include uh, testing of some of those um, uh, or sampling of some of those wells that uh, are not on an aquarium to see what, what's out there for water and a uh, preliminary study of cost to uh, connect them to um, town water. Thank you. Motion, we had a second. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Closing comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if we could uh, have a motion to resume our non-public session that was convened at 6 p.m. under RSA 91 hyphen capital A, colon three, Roman two, small c, reputation, and small e, litigation. I appreciate that. So we we'll need a roll call for that. Second. Roll call. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Channel 22.